okay so so yesterday we were talking about how to know about the structure of the molecule the structure of complex if we have ir or raman spectra with us so ir spectra was particularly useful that we have seen as evident from this chart you can uh, quite easily identify by simply looking at the number of bands observed you can predict the shape uh, what the geometry it is having so a simple thing that was turn, uh, turning out is more is the symmetry less will be the number of bands so an octahedral symmetry only one perfect tetrahedral uh, also one then d4h the planar you have only one band uh, stretching band come co stretching band coming so this was with respect to the carbonyl bands but this is true for any other complex okay whenever it is simply structure and symmetry related thing which may be applied to any other complex any other metal ligand complex okay so these are taking example of carbonyls we are understanding uh, learning about uh, a basic feature which will be important for all other complexes so that was the thing and uh, in the special cases that we talk about in the four fold symmetry of co axis same metal plane then two bands will be observed in this case if the symmetry is uh, in the case of trans ligands if they are collinear trans co ligands if they are collinear only one fewer band will be observed and we see this in the cyclopentadienyl uh, that metal ligand complex there also we have one band less because of uh, they are collinear so we we can correlate from this chart we are able to correlate lot many things uh so planar three co ligands are planar nearly planar then only two bands will be observed so like this you can have a uh, situations and th then we also saw over here because they they are linear the local symmetry of the uh, co ligands is also important not just the overall uh point group but is so because of this you are observing only one band the asymmetric stretching one whereas for the terminal carb co you are observing both agar sirf ek rehta tab yahan pe bhi do milta suppose if you would have uh, only one co then you might have observed two bands here that but because they are here two co ligands which are lying in a linear fashion with respect to each other on one line so this red circle you can see they are appearing appearance is like they are lying on along that line so because of this symmetry so as we have seen in oco mco group if it, it is present only one will be uh, uh, ir active because there will be no dipole change when it is symmetric stretching so that's why we are having this kind of situation uh, that only one bond is coming okay otherwise you do two bands were expected for each of them so these are things that we had discussed yesterday um so co ligands uh Mm hmm so this was the important point position of the co ligands where they are located that may be having more symmetry than the whole molecule itself and that is causing that disappearance you can say of the expected vibrational feature from the ir spectrum so
okay so this point is done then uh, so Raman spectroscopy also supplements uh, complements sorry the, the IR spectrum because some of the features which are not available in IR will be seen in the where dipole changes do not occur that will uh, but there is a lot of change in the molecular volume so it expands and contracts so stretching frequency the one that we have just discussed here this uh, stretching frequency along a line um, for CO mo uh, this moiety will appear in Raman spectrum you can expect that to happen so linear OCMO appears in this appears in uh, symmetric it will observe it always is observed in Raman spectrum then we have already noticed we can find out whether it is bridging uh, bridging with two two metal centers or bridging with three so all these things can be distinguished using spectroscopy IR spectroscopy you are able to do that we have already discussed this in past two uh, let, uh, in past two classes yes uh, so we can also talk about the pi acceptor strengths when other ligands are also present and so there was uh, just a small exercise determining the structure of a carbonic complex from IR data if this is the structure given to you, if this is the formula given to you what is the structure based on that 1889 cm inverse and two weak bands so, so um, in presence of phosphine ligands which are better donors and poorer pi acceptor so what will happen the pi electrons would be mostly donated the metal will donate most of the donation of metal say I back donation it will be most most of it will be going to CO and the CO is, so pi star orbital and it will be going into anti-bonding orbital the CO bonds will become weaker and so <clears throat> you can expect uh, having uh, something uh, decrease in the frequency if we uh, so we can also think of because it is uh, CO4 so you can there is possibility of cis and trans configuration so uh, you can first thing that you can think uh, uh, low symmetry and high symmetry environment cis isomer for CO ligands in low symmetry C2V environment trans isomer for CO ligands in D4H symmetry so only one band is expected in this case as per the table okay and four IR bands expected in this case but how many you are observing only one strong peak and a very weak band that was being observed so you neglect that weak very weak bands that was thing you can neglect this consider that only because um, so effectively it's because CO bands are always very strong very strong you have seen this so that strong one is due to CO other things are also being observed but that is due to the PPH3 ligands uh, which is breaks down the symmetry of the um, overall symmetry of the molecule is broken because of the bulky ligand okay so one phosphorus connected to three uh, benzene rings so obviously you are talking about very large uh, molecule which is binding to the metal okay so then two of such units are binding two such ligands are binding to the metal so they will uh, when you look at the symmetry it will not be exactly d4h although if you take the just as indicate the six ligands by points then it looks like d4h symmetry but it will be slightly less than that and because of that some very weak bands uh, can appear so that is not so important you what you are getting is effectively you have to consider that it is at 1889 cm inverse which is the 
strong peak so you are not getting any way the four bands you are not getting uh, you are only getting the one band that is possible for square planar complex okay so this is how you connect the dots and come to the conclusion so now we are moving to this amine complexes so first first of all you whenever we discuss these things we first try to understand what are the possible uh, vibrational modes in in the ligand and the when uh, and if the ligand combines with the metal what what are the other is there any new poss uh, possibility of vibration mode that that is coming in so this is example of uh, metal uh, binding to amine ns3 group so this is your z is the this is the metal you can take it to be metal and this is your ammonia n h like this so this is the way you have to treat it and so this particular thing is the stretching vibration uh, that you can think of so all the h atoms are moving look at the all h atoms nh ka nh ki vibrations ko dekh rahe ho so if this is nh so all hydrogen atoms are moving away from nitrogen so this is a symmetric vibration that we are talking about symmetric stretching second one is labeled as del s symmetric deformation symmetric stretching of mn bond mn so this is the mn bond this is if this is m this is n and th these were the h i told you so this is how you have to visualize so this is a stretching of the mn bond that is reflected through this this is a deformation of ns3 and uh, this is asymmetric stretch see this is asymmetric stretch of uh, see one of the hydrogen is moving in this one is coming out so this is an example of asymmetric st stretch and mu5 or sigma d uh, del d so this these are the names that is based on symmetry of the things you can name them like this so this is a degenerate set so the first three these are non-degenerate sets and uh, this one where you are seeing e written over here these are degenerate sets w degenerate e appearing from group theory analysis uh, so this is so you have uh, deformation degenerate modes degenerate deformation mode and then you have a wagging mode just like dog wags his tail something so these three are there so sorry so uh, so we simply considering so here so there will be actually six ns3 groups which will be bound to one metal but for the sake of simplicity we are considering only one one is to one one ligand one metal so this is the ligand is ns3 so the ligand structure should be fully understood with respect to the metal and that's why we are plotting uh, we, are, we are discussing only one is to one metal ligand complex here in this particular case normal modes of vibration the fundamental modes that we always find out by 3n minus 6 3n minus 5 those linear non-linear molecules so the fundamental modes uh, so there's six of th these which are important in this case out of which so six modes are there out of which three are doubly degenerate so uh, six plus three over in actual sense you are having nine modes of vibration that you can think of so for the vibrations that we have just seen uh, so these pictures that you have seen uh, corresponding to that where the these lies so nomenclature we have already done so you, you have uh, asymmetric mode of vibration then symmetric mode 
so we will see that we will have uh, this kind these things coming up so symmetric anti symmetric deformation of ns3 there is one way of deformation this uh, so this is so this one is doubly degenerate this is also doubly degenerate this is also doubly degenerate all these three so these are deformation two deformation two stretching and one stretching of the mn bond and this is the wagging kind of vibration uh, sorry wagging rocking rocking sorry rocking of so rocking mode of the vibration that you can see so this is a band assignment and then we can see that uh, this is a table that gives you the for all one, so one two three four five one two three four five and six sixth one is here mn stretch and uh, so most of the time what we do when we mostly analyze the mid ir region which is for the ligands and by looking at the ligands you can get the idea about the bands uh, about the strength of the metal ligand bonds okay so because the, for doing uh, going into the, this far ir region there is slight difficulty uh, in practical sense so here all the data is given so all of these modes okay so mu mn and uh, so you can see so color coding i have done over here see the symmetric ns3 stretching 34 3000 this is expected degenerate deformation 1650 to 1550 symmetric deformation the first one that was uh, non degenerate that is lying it uh, this further lower symmetric deformation has lower energy and then ns3 rocking vibrations appearing around 950 to 590 cm so you can see symmetric stretching uh, so the symmetric stretching this one no no this is asymmetric wala ho gaya. Uh, okay both symmetric and uh, okay anti-symmetric so this is the range that we have defined anti-symmetric and symmetric appearing in this range so in actual sense you can see this is anti-symmetric this is symmetric 3200 3300 something it is coming like this so the range you can see degenerate deformation is around uh, 1650 so degenerate deformation that uh, so that deformation which is uh, asymmetric mode degenerate deformation this one degenerate deformation this one Sorry. so this is a degenerate deformation uh, in 1650 to 15 and so this is a thing then you have uh, ns3 symmetric deformation symmetric deformation is in the thousand two so this one the, for the first one we are, it is appearing in this thousand to thirteen hundred something range so for others it is shifting and then from 590 to 950 you have the rocking rocking vibrations so just a chair rocking chair you have seen just like that you can imagine that in that molecule also that is rocking vibrations i have earlier i have shown those animations what a rocking vibrations means uh, so and then the stretching of mn band so through ir and through raman spectroscopy both you can obtain so these are this is what the table reads you have the all the details for these bands are given with their stretching frequencies okay 
So range of this is specified and uh, you can see here this is a spectrum for different types of so nickel complexes, chromium complexes, cobalt complexes. Three of them is shown nickel, cobalt, chromium. Chromium, chromium is here, cobalt, cobalt, and chromium. Uh, Chromium, cobalt, nickel. Nickel is my hair. Yetu, who will a nickel hair? Isotope. Okay, anyway. So we have nickel. Okay, anyway. So we can see for the chromium, you can have these things. So these are chromiums then cobalt like this so what we see here so you, you can see nickel is the dotted line chromium is the dust and that and the solid line is for cobalt so you can see the shift in the so there is a slight change in the positions although they are appearing in the same range so rocking vibrations these are for the lowest energy vibration that you are seeing this is the rocking one rocking vibrations then deformation you had this uh, symmetric deformation and asymmetric deformation one was requiring higher energy one is with lower energy so we had uh, symmetric deformation Mm, so around 1000 they will be around 1000 we have uh, this uh, symmetric deformation so this is your deformation and this is the degenerate degenerate mode of deformation deformation which is asymmetric basically asymmetric deformation you can say symmetric deformation asymmetric deformation so like this you are getting the bands in the, all this and this is the stretching of NH and this one is corresponding to NH stretch Stretching of NH vibrations. So you get all these things. So in NH stretch, you will have both the things asymmetric and symmetric stretch. So it's a slightly broad band 3200 to 3300 range, something like that. And so this is what we are getting. So degenerate, symmetric, and rocking. Okay. So the ranger is shown and individual depending on the metals you can see a change chromium nickel cobalt and rocking vibrations are very sharply you can see the change here so uh, what are why these are getting affected this is because of two reasons one is the effect of coordination so if the mn bond is stronger NH bond will become weaker so that will be directly reflected in this NH stretching okay so so you can see here with the dotted line nickel one is over here amongst the NH stretch is higher frequency side whereas for this two uh, other two the cobalt and the chromium for the cobalt and chromium it is towards lower side so in its stretching frequency has decreased in cobalt definitely it has decreased so as compared to nickel in case of cobalt uh, NH bonds have become weaker that means MN bond the metal to nitrogen bonds are stronger 
right so this is the way we have to make inference from the graph uh, from the spectrum that is given okay so nickel has a stronger nh bond that means nickel to nitrogen bond that metal to ligand bond is weaker if in case of cobalt you have a uh, so the case of cobalt is different so high frequency of nh bond nh stretch stronger nh bond that means metal to ligand bond is weak so this is how we have to uh, so it is similar to the, what we had done for carbonyls okay on coordination when a coordinate bond is formed and its bond is weakened okay stronger is the this mn bond weaker will be the nh bond okay and so lower will be the frequency so this is how uh, this, uh, so you can so st st this stretching frequency nh3 stretching frequency is a good measure of mn bond strength so look at the nh frequencies and from that you can tell about you can uh, very clearly tell about the strength of mn bond and uh, rocking uh, so nh rocking frequency rocking vibration the so we have the at the uh, high frequency region you have the stretching frequency the low frequency region you have nh3 rocking so uh, so we are now focusing on only two part of the spectrum that is rocking rocking and stretching and from these two we are able to know more about so two part of the spectrum lower end higher end high frequency and lower frequency low frequency end and from these two we are able to learn about the metal ligand bonds met mn bonds particularly so nh3 rock so a, a simple nh3 stretching is giving you a, uh, you get the idea from the nh3 stretching frequency you get the idea about mn bonds uh, how good they are the rocking frequency then can be used to compare the strength of the mn bond in a series of complexes of the same type and with the same anion so within a group you can then compare using the rocking frequency uh, so the second reason for the change in frequencies that we see uh, in these complexes is the first one was the coordination the mn bond formation of mn bond by donation of electron from nitrogen to metal the second reason that we are talking about is the effect of counter ion so each one of these so co ns36 it makes up a, a cation it is a complex cation which will be surrounded by nearby there will be a counter ion it will be surrounded by cl minus or any other ion sulfate chloride perchlorate anything so it has been found experimentally it has been found that ns3 stretching of chloride is much lower than those of perchlorate so in case of chloride the ns stretching frequency is uh, decreases keeping the metal ion same everything is same ns3 is there 6ns3 and uh, then there will be counter ion to, to balance the charge so that counter ion is also having some effect if you if we can check the table you can see the counter ion here is chlorine chloride in most of here the counter ion is chloride suppose this counter ion is changed that will also affect the bond pattern uh, so you have so it has been found that stretching frequency changes if so m n s 3 6 you can have M N H three six 
is certain charge n cl minus or you can have m minus 3 6 just as a rough measure i am telling you so this is the, you may have these two situations then it has been found that so this one will have uh, lower stretching so frequency stretching frequency is lower which frequency we are talking about nh stretching frequency is lower as compared to chloride so why it is like that because in case of uh, the charge density cl minus and per chloride clo4 minus both have one unit same charge same charge but the size is different different so cl minus is smaller so it has high charge density density and uh, cl minus should be is able to form hydrogen bonds so it is cl minus can form uh, hydrogen bonds with, with energy hydrogen bonding interaction with NH so because of the formation of these hydrogen bonds the NH bond will be weakened and the frequency is lowered so the counter ion that you have uh, to balance the charge with the complex heat ion that also affects the bonding pattern and that we I can see in the infrared spectra so this is uh, so this is so effect of counter ion is the second point chloride and perchlorate just told you it is the hydrogen bond in the cl with the cl minus which is uh, not possible in perchlorate and so you have greater weakening of NH bond. Mm. So the effect of this coordination and hydrogen bonding is also that NH3 deformation and rocking modes are shifted to higher frequency regions. And rocking mode is more sensitive than the degenerate deformation to these effects. So. Uh, as the coordination changes uh, as the uh, this rocking mode is highly sensitive now we we can talk about this uh, nitro and nitrito complexes an important thing in your coordination chemistry you have important ligand okay which can uh, bond it it is the same molecular species but it can uh, make it can donate electrons either through nitrogen or through oxygen so kind of uh, yeah uh, ambidentate ligand uh, so what we have so you can have three types of complex three four so actually five six types of complexes that has been shown nitro simple one nitrito when it is linked through oxygen chelating nitrito complex and it can be like this and then you can also have a, if it is not a close closing to form a ring it can having a bridging kind of linkage so NOO this is the bridge so it is acting like a bridge between two metals so all the second one is also so bridging can happen through one is through n another is connected through oxygen or both can be connected through oxygen and you can also have, or uh, both connected through the same oxygen or both are connected with the different oxygen of the same uh, no2 molecule 
so these are the different uh, varieties of different ways of coordination of the inner two molecule and accordingly the names are given so spectroscopy again it is very useful in distinguishing these structures so again the first thing that you will do you will try to find out make a 1 is to 1 complex imagine a 1 is to 1 complex analyze the uh, vibrational features and then uh, you are good to go you will be able to do it so we are taking one ns uh, one no2 one metal and then try to see what kind of vibrations are possible okay so there are again here you have six vibrational modes which are, which has been shown so uh, here it is hmm. so you have uh, the mu stretching stretching vibration the two oxygen atoms are moving outwards and x this is your m you can treat it as m this is n and this is oxygen this is oxygen so this is how you have to understand okay so in each in each of these pictures you have the same thing metal nitrogen oxygen oxygen so like this so the first one is your uh, symmetric stretching second one is your mn stretching vibration third one is uh, the vibration or deformation you can say o n o deformation and then you have asymmetric stretching uh, then rocking vibration uh, there is another mode of rocking vibration here where you have plus charge and minus plus like this charge species coming up so uh, these are the normal modes of vibration for a planar x z x y 2 type of molecules um, uh, so th these are the pictures that we can talk about in in addition to these modes there is also twisting no2 twisting and skeletal modes of the whole complex that may come in the low frequency region skeletal mode twisting and so whole complex this is the isolated view of a one is to one okay but if you are looking at the complex as a whole then it will be having octahedral geometry and attached each of the points that we are talking about is a molecule itself and having something so that will uh, there's some additional features will come in when we consider those things and this twisting and skeletal mode means basic skeleton of the molecule that we are seeing overall molecule will also have a vibration which will appear in the low frequency region so the most important ones are discussed uh, over here so you, this is the uh, so cobalt with nitro group nickel with nitro group iridium rhodium so all these compounds are shown it, in the, it is a typical it is a typical summary of all the frequencies the, uh, that is uh, all the vibrations that are seen in the infrared spectrum of uh, uh, such compounds such complexes so you can see that uh, you have asymmetric stretching and uh, symmetric stretching in this and this region symmetric stretching in the 1322 oh sorry 1320 to 1340 whereas 1372 so this is anti-symmetric you, you can see this this is symmetric both these are there okay 
and these are the other things that you we, we are seeing rocking rocking vibrations of two different types n2 mn mn stretch this is the mn stretch observed in the uh, low frequency region around 300 400 and uh, okay so these are the things that is observed in case of a nitro compound okay and this is the spectrum that can be obtained with for different salts uh, and different modes are clearly seen in this case you have a uh, rubidium salt having showing this around 1399 1327 you have two peaks coming over here 827 so this is so in the high, uh, higher frequency region we are talking about the asymmetric and symmetric vibration so the two peaks that we see in this region is one corresponding to the symmetric and asymmetric vibration at the slightly higher side on the higher frequency side okay then you have symmetric deformation and uh, rocking mode so it is the what uh, the it is the kbr indicates it the method we usually take FTIR spectrum by making KBR pellets in which the, some compound is mixed and then we uh, because KBR is transparent to, to the mid IR region that's why we have this kind of thing <coughs> so these are the spectrum of different kind uh, for the two A and B so this was first one is A this was for rubidium and sorry rubidium and the other salts a comparison has been made k3 uh, so cobalt nitro and uh, cobalt with uh, forming a nitro complex and then cobalt with uh, change of the cation count, counter ion on the outside cuno26 infrared spectra of the two cases so uh, what we see there's the asymmetric stretch shifts uh, to higher frequency whereas symmetric stretch changes very little on coordination asymmetric shifts to higher frequencies but uh, symmetric stretch almost none the infrared spectral crystalline uh, hexa nitro cobaltic salts that CONO26 that we were seeing CONO26 indicate the complex ion takes the symmetry of th symmetry in potassium with potassium rubidium and cesium salts it has tetraid th symmetry and uh, with sodium salts it has s6 symmetry in the molecule the ir spectrum uh, has been given in the previous slide and it, uh, there is also results uh, have shown or not, no, Raman, resonance Raman. So there are also resonance Raman spectra that can be compared with the IR spectra. Uh, so there is uh, so using 632 nanometer laser at 80 Kelvin. It has been shown that resonance enhancement occurs via the B term uh, since non-totally and totally symmetric vibrations both are observed okay there is also another possibility that we can have in such cases stereoisomers you can identify stereoisomers by applying certain rules just as we have seen in the in case of metal carbonyls symmetry based symmetry selection rules that is higher symmetry will be having less number of bands lower symmetry you will be getting more number of bands you are likely to get so that is the idea uh, that we still use that we have seen in carbonyls we are applying that principle over here as well so looking at the spectrum you can 
actually distinguish between cis and trans uh, cis isomer forms more it will have greater number of bands in the spectrum trans isomer will have less number of bands in the spectrum first thing this uh, so similarly and uh, you can use that to distinguish between fac and mer isomers because uh, the observation is that deformation of the no2 and rocking vibration of the no2 are higher for fac isomers so this is a, becomes a distinguishing feature fac isomers have uh, which have c3 symmetry uh, so if, as compared to them it has uh, so what is the observation that this frequency the rocking and the deformation both are mo moving to higher vibration higher frequencies for fac isomer fac is facial isomer so face pe ek face pe tino aa jate hain usko kehte hain fac isomer it is having higher frequency similarly uh, and you will observe less number of bands in case of cis uh, in case of trans so these are the features by by which applying this principle you can distinguish between whether uh, your compound is trans or cis so in this uh, cobalt uh, where you have uh, bound to four ammonia and two nitro so in this case there is a possibility of cis and trans and cis isomer will be having less uh, sorry more number of bands trans isomer is great highly symmetric it will have less number of bands so similarly fac and fac and uh, mer isomers can also be distinguished uh, noting that you, uh, the there is shift to higher frequencies in fac isomers which bands the bending and the rocking vibrations shift to higher frequencies so so these are the uh, yeah nitro group is bonded to a metal through oxygen atom so now uh, it is we are talking about nitrito through oxygen atoms one of the oxygen atoms is used to coordinate to the metal so this is uh, nitrito and some of the nitrito complex so we do not if we know that it is linked through oxygen we write it like this ono not no2 to uh, so that we do not have any confusion when we write we, what we mean if it is nitrito always write in this manner o n o okay so these are the major frequencies so stretching frequency of n o double bond n o single and then bending so these are the three types of band that can be observed in nitrito very clearly so ranges you are seeing 1400 around 1460 1405 to 1468 in this case you have uh, from 1065 to uh, 1065 to 1100 whereas bending you have 825 824 or more or less coming in this range 835 maximum so these are the things so trans uh, okay cis and trans is mean dna you know is a table in the example so they can be distinguished and uh, so what we see here uh, new double bond so this is new no double bond o so there is a double bond and there is single bond two type of no vibrations that we can see and uh, the frequencies are clearly what we have seen in this range clearly visible from the table uh, so night so there is one important point here please pay attention nitro and nitrito how will you distinguish using the spectroscopy there is so important thing is to note is that in nitrito complex the wagging mode at 620 cm inverse is gone you had this feature appearing in nitro complexes 
620 cm inverse the wagging mode tail wagging 620 wala jo tha um, yes previously nitro compounds you were having around 620 a the wagging mode 620 this mode you were having so this particular mode is present in nitro but it is absent in nitrito so that becomes a distinguishing feature we can we carry out infrared spectroscopy and if we find that the wagging mode is absent then it is a likely to be a nitrito complex all nitro complexes mind it all nitro complexes have a uh, feature of the 620 around 600 something so all of these nitro complexes this wagging mode or uh, is present tail wagging uh, mode is present around at around 620 to 637 like this so that becomes a distinguishing feature and this particular mode is absent in what we are discussing now in the nitrito nitrito mein wo nahi hai so stretching frequency of mo bond metal oxygen bond in nitrito can be assigned like uh, metal oxygen 360 340 cm inverse so far higher side uh, okay and uh, so this is the reason for large number of metals chromium 3 rhodium 3 iridium 3 for all of them it is in this range and there are many com compounds n nitro complexes where both the coordination modes are mixed like some of the uh, if you have six out of the six uh, coordination of uh, nitro groups, some of them is coordinated through nitrogen, some other will be coordinated through oxygen. So that is also some has been observed in many cases, and uh, which is a case here pointed out. Nickel hex hexa nit nitro nickel six nitro groups with one nickel. So. In solution phase, it has been uh, it, it it has been found that it is this is the coordination through nitro nitrogen, but uh, and in anhydrous phase, salt when you make the salt of it, it has been found that there is a mixture of the two which is present. Four of them are bound through nitrogen and two of them are bound through oxygen. So this is the for anhydrous salt and uh, this is it can be so this was a, so this is anhydrous salt which and this is <clears throat> the simple compound hydrated compound. Hydrated salt, hydrated salt, and anhydrous salt. So, if water is present in the, as a water of crystallization, you will see all of them are connected through nitrogen. If water is gone, uh, two of them are now linked through oxygen. So, this is the thing that is observed, and the result is that you see in nitro group you get features for this there is no nitrito group here it is you see the absent the two corresponding to n double bond o and n single bond o no peaks are observed for at these positions okay uh, corresponding to these two positions the peaks are absent so this is the way uh, this can be prepared so uh, distinction distinction between nitro and nitrito can be made okay so that's all for this uh, particular thing
सो so, अब आप हम लोग एन इसके बाद शुरू करेंगे स्टार्ट विथ एन इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास